Now we're going to take a look at the quantum energy and the photon. And what we're dealing with here is the way we want to look at electromagnetic radiation. In the previous video, we realized that whenever we have a charged object and we move it back and forth in space or we accelerate it, electromagnetic radiation emanates from that object. That's the disturbance that a charged object causes in space then ripples through space just like when you throw a rock in water, the ripples emanate away from that rock, and so you see the disturbance emanates away as waves, and in space, the same thing happens with electromagnetic radiation. But then we began to realize that all matter, everything seems to be quantized into small little chunks. For example, when you want to pour a glass of water, here's a, here's a glass, and you want to pour some water from a pitcher into the glass, and it goes in, of course, we. Think of that as being a continuous stream of water. That's that liquid flowing in. But you don't realize what that liquid is made of. And in essence, it's made of little chunks of material. For example, water molecules have one oxygen and two hydrogens. And if you look at water at a very microscopic level, all it is is simply little chunks of matter, little chunks of atoms joined together, three at a time. And so when you pour water into a glass, you're really pouring a bunch of little chunks of water H2O's into your glass. They're so small and there's so many of them, it doesn't appear to be that that's quantized, but in essence, all matter, just like water flowing, is quantized, made out of little chunks. So the idea that energy was just continuous and flowing, just like water, probably wasn't true, and people began to think about maybe energy being quantized just the same. Max Planck is the one that really brought this theory forward, and believe it or not, most people, most scientists around the world thought he was absolutely wrong, that no, that there's no way that energy can be quantized. Energy had to just be a continuous stream of energy. So when electromagnetic radiation goes through space and hits an object, the energy is simply deposited onto the object and the object warms up. Just like when you stand in the sun, you receive the energy, you warm up, put an object outside in the sun, the object warms up. So energy seems to simply be received from the, from the electromagnetic radiation, causing it to heat up. But Planck said, no, I think energy is quantized. It's made up of little chunks of energy. And so he also thought that the energy was proportional to the frequency of the oscillations of that radiation. So he said that the energy within each chunk is approximately or is proportional to the frequency of how fast that oscillates. Now, the quantization of energy, first he called the energy chunks quanta. Later on, we ended up calling them photons. So a photon is simply a little chunk of energy. It could be visible light, it could be infrared radiation, it could be ultraviolet radiation, just a little chunk of that energy. Eventually, they turned this into an equation. They said that H, I mean energy of a chunk, like a photon, is equal to H times the frequency, where H is now named Planck's constant. It's a constant that they figured out that turned the energy of a quanta into a real equation. Now, H is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And the frequency, well, that depends on the frequency of the radiation. Now, since waves, act, radiation waves act like waves, we know that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And, of course, the speed of light or photons is equal to the speed of light, is equal to the frequency of the wavelength. So the frequency of a photon is equal to the speed of light divided by its wavelength. So let's find out what the frequency of visible light would be. Well, the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And visible light on average is about 500 nanometers. It varies from 400 to 700. So let's, say, let's just take 500, 500 nanometers, which is times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And that would be the frequency at which typical visible light oscillates. So we have 3 e to the 8 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus equals, we get 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So, if we plug that in here for the frequency, we then have 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or per second, and we multiply that time, so the seconds cancels per second, and we end up with joules, so that would be the energy contained within a single photon. So we multiply this time 6.626 e to the 34 minus, and we get 4 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So this is equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now sometimes we also convert that to electron volts. Now without going into the details what an electron volt is, 
turns out that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we can also convert that from joules to electron volts by dividing by 1.6 e to the 19 minus equals, and we get 2.48 electron volts. So you can see that it's easier to work with those numbers than to work with these big numbers like that. All right, so now we realize energy, electromagnetic radiation, is divided into small little chunks called quanti, so therefore we know energy is quantized. We now also call them photons, and the energy of a single photon is equal to some constant, known as Planck's constant, times the frequency of that photon. For visible light, the frequency is around 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. That means the waves go up and down 6 times 10 to the 14 times per second. You multiply times the Planck constant, you have the energy of a single photon, and we can convert that to electron volts. Now, why is that important? Because the energy going back and forth between electrons and atom from, from atoms to atoms, those are usually also made out of photons. It's quantized, and there are certain rules and regulations that happen when we deal with that kind of energy transfer. So understanding the atom, it's very important to also understand that energy is quantized and how that interplays with how photons and electrons interact within atoms. And there you go.